Hey guys, I'm Susie Lolly. If I'm just now meeting you, you have missed a bunch of videos. So when you're done watching this one, go back and watch them. But tonight I'm going to take actually a viewer request. One of you had asked, can you give us some ideas for specials teachers? Those of you who feel like, you know what, there's always ideas for core teachers, but what about the rest of us? You know, Festivus for the rest of us. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get into some really specific ideas. They're geared toward probably more elementary, middle age, but you can certainly use them as inspiration for wherever you are. So stay tuned. If you watched my Canvas for Littles series, then one of the things I took you through were assignment ideas very specific to little kids. And so tonight I wanna to take you through some ideas that are very specific to specials teachers, as I said. So I've labeled them here, but again, these are just inspiration. You are the ones who are gonna take these to the next level. And so let's go ahead and get started. So I have a music activity here. You're gonna notice a lot of these are text box based, but I do have a couple other options as well. So, and these were actually helped I had teachers help me develop these specific ideas. We were working toward a digital learning day. And now, it's <laughs> so funny that now every day is a digital learning day for most of us across the country, uh, or at least some of your students are learning from you digitally. So how funny that we were preparing then and we didn't even know. So anyway, for example, this one, they were writing out a rhythm. They were learning about a four beat rhythm, different types of notes. And then the teacher had them watch how to make those notes. This is just an embedded YouTube video. I'll show you how to do that a couple different ways. And then the kids were gonna submit a text entry box. So if I go into student view, and maybe that's what I'll do for this whole thing. Remember, you can find student view on the home button. And then it's student view, the little pair of glasses. I wish I had this module, X on there. I wish I had this module directly linked, but I don't. So I am going to go into, you know what? I don't even have module shown over here at all. So it's a good time to show you, if you did not watch the previous video, how you can make sure these buttons are enabled for your viewers. I'm gonna go into settings. I'm gonna go into navigation and I'm a fan of dragging almost everything to the bottom except for modules because I think they're the unsung hero of Canvas. So everything else that I don't want students to see, I can still use it. I'm the boss, I can still use whatever I want, but I just drag it to the bottom. And I did show this in more detail in another video. It's called Simplifying the Sidebar. Feel free to watch that. But now if all is well with the world, I should have modules. So I'm gonna go back to home and then student view. I also have that in settings. I just have a particular habit that I've developed. And now when I go into modules, I don't have a direct button there, but I'll just hop down and get into this activity as a student. And you can see that there's the video for me to watch, but I have a submit button. So as a student, I would enter that and I would follow these directions to type out whatever rhythm it is I wanted to have in there. So they're able to watch a YouTube video and then do the activity. Okay, let's see what's next. I'm gonna cancel out of that. Okay, another music. I have several music ones. I don't know if those teachers were just more active or <laughs> what it was, but I have I have some for pretty much every specials area. This one, the kids were learning about stringed instruments. So again, they watched a video and then they were gonna write facts. Again, it's still a text box. So when I go to submit, I have that box there that I as a student could write in. You'll know what kind it is because you'll see right here where it says submitting a text entry box. Next, still music, I believe. Yeah, instruments of the orchestra. This, this one took the kids out to a uh, the Dallas Symphony Orchestra website where they could listen and learn to the, district, the different instruments, and then they could come back. Again, we can do a lot with embedding. You can't always embed a full website, um, so I don't see an embed code here, but you can always play around with that. Think of something you could embed so the kids don't actually leave uh, the site to go find it. So you can embed a YouTube video that will fulfill that same purpose. And then they were gonna write you know, the different instrument names and they were gonna tell one instrument from each family. So again, this is a text box. This one I wanted, I just made a few minutes ago just to give you some examples of how I've seen, especially performance-based classes use it a lot. So this one can work elementary, middle, high, but I'm thinking more of my middle and high school friends. If you are a drama teacher, a dance teacher, a music teacher, I want you to think of anything where you need your kids to record themselves either auditorially or visually and submit that to you. So it could be, um, you know, maybe you're doing scales in chorus. Okay, you're practicing for all state auditions or something like that. I remember the chromatic scale being a challenge for me, so I just wrote that one here. But, you know, you can have them sing a scale, play a scale. You could have them sight read something if you're in chorus. You could have them play a piece of music on whatever instrument. If you're a drama teacher, you could have them perform a monologue. You know, if you're an art teacher, I'm going to give some art ideas in a minute, but if you're an art teacher, think about how they could do a digital exhibit and they could, you know, 
post what they have, you know, painted and what medium they used. And blah, blah. I said medium, even though I just said painted. Okay, whatever they <laughs> their piece of art is, what medium they used to make it. So think of anything where kids, and I'm going to go into this because it's a little different, but think of anything where kids could use the video or audio recorder that comes with Canvas. You've never touched that? Well, I have a whole video on accessibility, so you might want to go ahead and check that one out. It's also my Canvas for Little series. But if they submit an assignment, it is going to either let them, I said upload or record here, because maybe the kids have a phone and they can just upload a video from there. Um, if they have the app on their phones, they should be able to upload a, just a, a video from their phones. The other option is if they go to media, they can record or upload right from here. And the limits they have on the size and all of that have to do with what's set in your school or your district. But there's a built-in photo, or excuse me, video or audio recorder that they can use to do whatever it is you need them to do to perform in some way. They can have a video of themselves performing a monologue or you know, a group of people performing a skit and such and such, okay? Leave, yes, don't care about that. As far as art goes, I have a couple activities that elementary teachers developed on secondary, and then there's another one on primary colors. This one is, here are the secondary colors used in the painting. What are they? Describe it. Again, that one is a text box. Another text box, but this one, and y'all, I just put the image in here. It has disappeared. Let me see. This is the image that was in there that I put in there twice. But anyway, <laughs> um, this was, again, one that they could do from home where they walk around their kitchen and find three cool colors and then tell what colors they are. This teacher, though, kind of gave them the answer. Let me go back. The teacher kind of gave them the answer there, so maybe you don't want to give them the answer if you're going to ask them to go find it. <laughs> this was a STEM teacher was exploring the weather, and so we were talking about a reason they might have to stay home was the weather. Now it's a virus. <laughs> These were simpler times. But anyway, why did the weather keep you from coming to school today? Use things like seasons, temperature, what's dangerous, and then they just wrote them a little reply. Then I think I have uh, one more idea for you. And this was a PE teacher. So if you're a PE, I highly recommend STEM in the gym. I'll try to put his name somewhere. You know what? I always forget to put things in the description box. But if you go on Twitter, STEM in the gym, S-T-E-M in the G-Y-M, is a good Twitter account to follow that gives a lot of ideas. But this was developed by a PE teacher I know. And he was going to have the kids time themselves for 30 seconds and then talk about activities they could do in that amount of time and submit that to him. So again, text entry box, but getting them physical. Any way that we can get them up, even if it's not PE, even if it's a scavenger hunt around the kitchen like the art teacher did, how can we get them up and moving and out from in front of this stinking computer that they and we are attached to all day long? Um, I want to, in the next clip, just show you where you can find more ideas besides the ones I shared. So in the words of LeVar Burton on Reading Rainbow, you don't have to take my word for it. Y'all, I tried desperately in between clips <laughs> to find my picture that I got with LeVar Burton Back in, I don't know, 2016 or something, it was like a great day for me. <laughs> I'm a reading rainbow 80s child. But anyway, I digress. Um, I wanted to show you where you can get tons of ideas, and they're totally free. There's no TPT, uh, you know, account that you have to have to, to buy resources. They're free on Canvas. So just a reminder that if you look at your blue bar over here, you should have the commons. Okay, if your district has disabled that, I'm so sorry. I don't know what to tell you. But I'm getting it in the free account, so maybe you can make a free account as well. Um, and then you can go search by all kinds of filters. So when you click this filter right here, you can search for what type of resource you want, what grade level. So I'm not going to filter by that right now, but let's just say elementary. Y'all, I'm just going off the fly here. I probably should have looked up things first. But elementary music, there's video of the day, there's sing and dance, there's bow tie music, just different things that are in there. If I do elementary art, let's just try it. I'm trying these live and in person, or if I take that out and just put, I don't know, let's put pointillism. That's the only kind of art I can think of at this moment. <laughs> oh, look, there's even pointillism, y'all, and I totally made that up. So I feel like if my ideas weren't enough to get you started on how things actually can work in Canvas, go grab somebody else's. They're all in here, and you can filter by grade level, or you can just type a search like I did. So don't feel limited by my ideas. Those are just your springboard. And I love, love, love when you guys tweet me at Susie Lolly. You just have to add that E in there to make sure it gets to me. Um, but if you tweet me and show, share with me screenshots of what you're doing, I will love it. Hope this video helped.
Hey guys, I put my heart into these videos, so I hope you loved it. I hope you've loved all of them, but if you haven't, then make sure you go back and watch the previous videos. I'm making playlists for you all the time. So if you're somebody who wants time savers, there's a playlist for that. If you want to gamify, playlist for that. And all of my themes of my blog. So did you like it? Go ahead and click the thumb below. If you really liked it, I'd love if you shared it on your favorite social media channel. I'm at Suzy Lolly on Twitter. And then finally, my very favorite is if you subscribe. Subscribe to YouTube and subscribe on the blog. Take care.